When you think of female police officers, who do you think of? Depending on your age, you may think of Angie Dickinson in Police Woman, Cagney and Lacey in the 1980s, or my favorite, Rainisha, Trudy, and Clementine from Reno 911. The first police woman in the United States was, allegedly, Alice Wells, who was hired in Los Angeles in 1910. Los Angeles is a pretty progressive place, so that shouldn't surprise us, right? So when did Texas first hire a lady cop? The answer may surprise you, and it may surprise LA, too. So, L.A. claims the first female police officer. I was doing some research on Austin's first policewoman, a widow named Eva Buckner, who joined the force as police matron in 1918, because I assumed she was our first. And boy, was I wrong. San Antonio, as it turns out, added a woman to the force a full decade before Los Angeles added theirs. So, did Texas actually have the first female officer? The answer is maybe. It depends on how you parse the words policewoman. In 1899, San Antonio hired a Scottish immigrant woman named Elizabeth Dunn Hardy. She was about 40 years old when Mayor Hicks appointed her police matron. Although she was called a policewoman around town and by the press, her duties really weren't what we think of as policing nor was her office anything that would be familiar to us. Miss Hardy had a private room of her own located inside police headquarters, and she was there and on call 24-7. Miss Hardy reportedly worked 14-hour days. So what did it take to become a policewoman 100 years ago? What were the qualifications? According to one Texas newspaper in 1913, a policewoman needed to be husky. Their adjective? Not mine. She needed nerve and common sense, as well as experience in social services and a deep understanding of children. Many of the earliest police women were widows whose kids were grown, and some were spinsters. They were looking to turn their domestic skills into a way to earn an independent, honest living. Most people back then agreed that a police gal should dress any way she liked, but that she should wear a badge. As to weapons, it was agreed by men and women alike that no woman should ever carry a policeman's club. That would be too masculine. A few radical suffragettes expressed a desire for policewomen to carry revolvers. But most suffragettes disagreed, saying that a woman should make her way only, quote, with women's weapons, the chief of which was common sense. In each Texas city where police matrons were hired, the male officers were, eh, on the fence at first, kind of skeptical. But soon they realized this basic truth. There are conversations that women can have with other women that a man and a woman will always fail at miserably. Soon the men applauded the successes of the new police matrons and welcomed them to the force. By the dawn of the 19-teens, the concept of police women had fallen into favor all across the state of Texas. Dallas and Fort Worth each had police matrons. San Antonio had several. Austin was kind of late to the party, hiring their first lady officer in 1918, a full 20 years after San Antonio paved the way. During the teens, responsibilities for police ladies escaped the walls of the police station because society was changing. Women were out and about more, so police women were out and about more too. When movie theaters became a popular pastime, it was the job of the police matron to make sure there was no uh, funny business going on at the picture show. This was doubly true when movies started being played in the dark. Same thing at dance halls and swimming holes. The police matron made sure that young women unaccompanied by their own mothers weren't taken advantage of. In Austin, police matron Buckner made it her job to enforce bathing suit dress codes and to make sure that no young people snuck off to canoodle on the benches and shrouded by the trees near swimming holes. She pushed for, and she won, an ordinance mandating full skirt lengths, no, no abbreviated skirts, and stockings for women, and full bathing suits for men. No going shirtless in Austin, 
boys. If you left the swimming hole for any reason, you had to put on a bathrobe. Any place young people met, the police matron was there to make sure girls were not accosted or making foolish choices. She was a maternal presence looking over your shoulder if your own mom wasn't there to smack you upside the head with a shoe. What she lacked, however, was the power to arrest you. And here lies, maybe, the distinction between San Antonio's 1899 policewoman and Alice Wells of LA in 1910. She had a badge and was fully empowered to arrest female lawbreakers. And mind you, she did relegate her arrest to female offenders and she rarely used the power. Alice said that a policewoman, quote, does not try to do the traditional work of the policemen on the street, end quote. She was still very much an advocate for women, but she was an advocate with the power of arrest. Not long after L.A. brought on a lady officer, Chicago and other large cities followed suit. Chicago hired 20 ladies for work outside the police headquarters. The Chicago police women even devised a way to remain fashionable while enforcing the law. They wore full-length skirts in 1913, but with a short slit cut at the bottom to allow better range of motion for their feet. But if a full-on foot chase were required, the skirts would easily tear up the leg only to a point to allow full range of motion, but to retain the lady's modesty. Cop frocks, they were called. From that initial crop of Chicago police women, San Antonio plucked their first fully commissioned policewoman, Mrs. Clara Graham. Here she is. Although San Antonio trumpeted that Clara was fully commissioned, I find no evidence that she wore a badge or had the power of arrest. In 1917, though, Houston hired Eva Jane Bakker to their detective force, and she had a badge, badge number 10, actually. She investigated moral hygiene issues in a similar fashion to what police matrons had been doing across the state, but Eva worked in what would become the Houston Vice Squad. Near as I can tell, Houston was the first city in Texas to pin a badge on a lady. So, who had the first policewoman? San Antonio in 1899 or L.A. in 1910? Again, depends on how you define the word officer. We know how it's defined today. There's a police academy. There's rigorous training and testing and hiring practices. But what made a police officer a police officer before all of that? Was it the badge, the power of arrest, the duties? You tell me down below in the comments. I'm genuinely curious because, of course, I would like to claim that Texas had the fir first policewoman in the United States. And, you know, even if we let L.A. keep that title, I'm still proud of our husky, brassy, nurturing pioneers of law enforcement. Aren't you? Until next time, God in Texas, y'all.